Hey everyone, welcome back once again to another episode of Adulthood. Today, we are tackling taxes. Taxes. Taxes can be so scary. Why is that? We are going to try to simplify them as much as we can today and explain them with the help of our expert, David. I'm also bringing in my friend Sam for this journey. She is a YouTuber and actress, and she has as many questions as I do about taxes. Let's get started. All right, Sam, we are going to be learning about taxes today. I am ready. Do you know anything? <laughs> I know nothing I, about taxes. I don't know anything either. It's okay. Okay, okay David, good. David's well, going to be helping us. Okay. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Hello. David. Hi, David. David. Megan. Hi. Nice to meet you. Sam, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for taking your time to explain taxes. I know some basics that depending on what you're earning each year, it's gonna kind of be dependent on how much you have to pay, what that percentage looks like. How do you know what you're supposed yeah. to be doing next? It's a good question. And actually I get that quite a bit um, because a lot of times people will get a, a paycheck and they know they might look at it and they might say, gee, I, I, I work, you know, I make $20 an hour, I work 10 hours. I should get $200, but they don't. They get 195 or 185, something like that. And they're kind of like, why am I getting less? And so it's taxes and they go, okay, taxes are paid. And they don't realize um, it, that it's really still your money and it's gotta be reconciled at the end of the year. That's why we file tax returns. So it's like you, you get your, um, your withholdings, but it's an estimate. And then you come back to your tax return and you try to figure it out. And so where the, where the challenges come in or where oftentimes people need help is in doing that reconciliation because there's a lot, of, a lot of places that you can get advantages for different things that, you, that the law allows that you can then save on the taxes. And that would be why you would maybe hire a professional or something like that to help in those kind of things. Right. So what exactly can you write off? <laughs> Charitable contributions, deductible item. Um, you can deduct a limited amount of state taxes that you might pay, or property taxes if you own a, own a home, or a mortgage interest mm. is another thing that you can deduct. That's when you're an employee, but there's also the opportunity when you're an independent uh, contractor. So you're not getting paid with withholdings, but you're just getting a straight check. Yeah, that's so that's kind of the situation I'm in. I'm an independent contractor, and then you, you're kind of like, I work a middle a whole ground. bunch yeah. of things. <laughs> yeah, because I'm employed. I'm also an independent contractor, right. and I can also consider myself self-employed yep. in some areas as well. As an independent person, so over in that for a minute, you can deduct more things. So now you want to take um, expenses that are related to your business and um, deduct it. You take it right off, and you're paying less less tax. So things like we both make a lot of videos for YouTube. Would you consider things like wardrobe for the videos? Is that something yes. that occasionally you can So be it's done? tricky. Yes, okay. It's there, tricky. There's a line, line there. So, so, uh, so for example, for yourselves, if we were talking about grooming expenses, mm -hmm. we're gonna do hair and makeup and different things like that, absolutely, no problem. You get in, so My make hair. sure, <laughs> make sure you, you keep track of all that stuff. My nails. Yeah. You know? But then the clothing, they, they've always, they kind of carved that out a little bit. And they said, well, if you can, if you're gonna wear this somewhere else, mm -hmm. then maybe it's not deductible because you can get a personal use. However, if you were to purchase something and it was gonna really only be used for one or two things, you had something special you needed to wear. A nice ball gown or something yeah. very like sparkly yeah. that you're not When you get your Oscar. So then that might, you might be able to get away with something like that on clothing, but that one's a little carve out. Yeah. Um, but yes, other things, um, you mentioned videos. Well, uh, do you need to watch movies or watch videos so that you can perfect <laughs> your skill? I have a friend of mine that's, um, He's on a soap opera. Mm -hmm. He watches shows and he perfects his own talent. Research. He, there you go. I do that a lot. So that's a deduction. Actually. <laughs> that's a deduction. Okay. So when you drive to different places, mm -hmm. mileage is a deduction. Because you're independent, your home is essentially where you start from. Yeah. And wherever you go, you're going to get your mileage deduction. Now, when you work, 
if you drive from your house to your to your office, that's commuting. They don't count that. Mm -hmm. When you're working independently, you want to keep track of your miles. Um, and that's the other part about uh, keeping track is keeping receipts, mm -hmm. documenting different things. Um, so keep good records, keep good receipts, document, and then um, either have someone help you keep track of that throughout the year so you don't end up with a pile of receipts at the end yeah. of the year. Yeah, you're like, what goes with what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I ended up keeping a little bag in my car that I can put my receipts in for gas and things like that. No, it's a great idea. And there's a lot of different kind of systems you can use to keep track and keep hold of things. Because that's part of it, you know. Part of it's understanding the taxes. You gotta pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. There's different rates, there's different um, uh, categories, working, independent, all those kind of things. And then the other part is just making sure that you have the records you need so that when it does get prepared, the, the accountant or whoever it is that's preparing it has the supporting docs. And going back to the, you know, being employed versus being independent and how you pay those taxes, I don't, I, I guess, does it kind of end up being like one big lump sum that you pay or are you looking at the separate individual businesses at the end of the year? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's the, the answer, of course, is it depends. But to be more uh, uh, simple about it, your, your wages, you have that withholding that comes out. Mm -hmm. So you've got something that's been paid in, hopefully enough. On your other side, you don't have anything that's been paid in. And so you, you need to be paying that quarterly. I would love to dive into a lot of the paperwork and forms that go along with it, with your tax return. What W-9s, 1099s, just uh -huh. kind of like a simple explanation of each one, why we use them and what they're for. So good question. So the, uh, the W-2 yes. is your first one. That's your employee. That's, and that's gonna show your total wages and it's gonna show your um, social security that's been withheld, paid into the social security administration for your retirement in the future, um, your federal withholding, your state withholding, and some disability type insurance. The other thing that's on there that I really, really try to encourage people is pension contribution. And I don't know if you, your current place that you work now, if they offered you what's called a 401k, does that mean anything? Yes. 401k, yes. kind of? Yes, it so does. Here's, it's ringing a bell. <laughs> okay, so here's what happened to me some 30 years ago when I got my first job. I went in and they said, oh, you can opt into the 401k plan and group life insurance. And I was, what, 22, 23 years old. And I'm like, well, first of all, I don't need life insurance. What, what good is that, right? Well, it's like, it's like $50 a year. So it's like for coverage, if something happened to me, it's cheap, so why not? And then the second was the 401k, which I had no clue what it was. It's Internal Revenue Code Section 401k. And it's pension contribution. It means that if you put money away into a, a plan that you're not gonna touch until you're at least 59 years old, so you're putting away for your future, you don't pay tax on it now. Pension contribution is a deduction. So it's gonna, it's gonna lower your tax rate today. So what's 1099? Those are the forms that are used to report to you your income as an independent contractor. Now, why do we do those? The reason why those are done is because the government doesn't trust the individual. So they want the businesses who they have a little tighter control on to report what they've paid. And then they require to send you a copy. So the government knows and they know. And actually the businesses is fined if they don't do it. So they really try to incentivize. Yeah. So that's the 1099. So those are some of the different forms that you're receiving that are used to put into your tax return. Yeah. Information overload, <laughs> taking it in little by little, but yeah. we're doing pretty good so yeah. far. So I always tell people, just gather it all, put it in an envelope, let me go through it with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? So you can do that too. You would encourage people to like do right away because I think, you know, as young people, sometimes we're not thinking about necessarily like retirement or the future, but mm -hmm. it's good to start planning now. I like to encourage it. You know, it's hard for younger people to get ahead now because things are expensive, yeah. you know, and it's tough. I look at younger people, it's very confident. I mean, they're, they've got a lot going for them. And I think that they're the ones that are primed to do things like these five different kinds of income because they're going to do a job and they're not afraid to go on and do a YouTube video at night and put it out there so they can make some extra revenue, something like that. So that's good. But yeah, along the lines of that, put some money away. So I just try to encourage as much as you can. You gotta invest, you gotta save, retirement, and then you have living. 
So you mentioned reducing your taxable income through deductions. What does that look like? And this is another thing that kind of confuses people sometimes because, for example, we, we mentioned charities, okay? So a lot of times people will say, well, if I give $1,000, does that mean I save $1,000 in tax? Because mm -hmm. I'd rather give it to the charity than give it to the government. It doesn't quite work that way. Mm -hmm. It's based on a percentage. So es essentially what happens is, let's say you started with you know, uh, $50,000 and you decided that you were gonna give away um, $1,000. Well, that 50,000 puts you in a tax bracket. Actually, your brackets go like, basically like from 10 to 12, 15, 28, 35 percent so they ratchet up okay yeah so you can end up at 35 percent you can end up and that's just on the federal Whoa, side okay. we have state yeah. income tax as well they ratchet up so wherever that 50,000 ends up which is probably in the 15 percent tax bracket so that thousand dollars you give away you're saving 150 dollars in tax so it reduces the amount of taxable income which is then perhaps lowering you into a lower bracket, or at least it's just less taxed in the bracket that you're in, be it the 15, 10, 15, or 20. Okay, so it, can actually, it actually can move your bracket. It can move you down, because okay. if the bracket were to cut off at 50, um, for the 25%, let's say, um, and you gave away $1,000, you're gonna be at 49. You're, you're not in that 25% bracket anymore. You're at the lower bracket. But the other thing is, is that the brackets, it, if you end up in, say, the 25% bracket, you're not, you're not paying everything at 25%. It's the first 10,000 is at actually 0%. The next 15,000 is at 10%. So it's an average. I was talking to a guy the other day and, and, I, and he said, well, what's my tax bracket? I said, well, you're in 35% bracket. I said, but you only paid 25% on average. That's, that's how the deductions help though, is that they're gonna move you down in your taxable income. So I have a lot of friends that actually file on their own and I wanted to know your thoughts on that because you know what is the best way to handle it when you're doing it yourself? Yeah. So there are some options that can make it inexpensive like actually free and um, and you can get the job done. Um, the, the best way is actually the IRS offers a free filing service. Now the only caveat you got to be careful is when you go online, you put in irs.gov. Don't look at any websites that are not GOV, because anything that's not GOV is going to charge you. Yeah. Oh, I was going to uh, say also, uh, I'm not scary. I thought you were going to say you, you could be giving your information to who knows Could be who. that too. <laughs> I mean, could be that too. Yeah. So you never know what's going to be out there. So you want to look at GOV, but then there's, it's pretty simple. It's, you know, file, file online. You go in, some basic information. Um, and the same thing for the Franchise Tax Board, which is California. California Franchise Tax Board, ftb.ca.gov, so that way you know you're at the right place. GOV is what I always tell everybody. And the only tricky thing about that is you gotta check with your parents if you're, you know, if you're still under their wing a little bit, because there's what's called a dependency deduction. And you wanna make sure that if you're gonna claim it, they're not, because yeah. they can do it when they're still helping support you. Um, so that you don't double up. But other than that, that's the best way to do it when you're just getting started. And quite honestly, I encourage people to do that. Um, alternatively, if you if you do have parents that that do their taxes with a preparer, tag along. So Sam, do you have any questions left for David before we wrap up? Yeah, so I was actually wondering how someone like us would go about finding the best person to do our taxes and what that would be like. My first go go to is is who do your parents go to? Because if they already have a relationship with someone and they already sort of know your parents, that's a good place to start and you can kind of get in and get some stuff for free. Yeah. Um, so that would be the first place to do. Um, other than that, I would, if you have friends that are in your business, talk to your friends and ask them. Like if you have an accountant that you've used and you're looking for one, refer over because you want to know somebody because you want to trust them. Yeah. And I think that's a big, that's a key part. And that's, that's a good way to get it. And then when all else fails, then I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send everyone to David. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. helping us today. Um, information overload in a great way. Just well, so much to take in. I'm glad, I'm glad I could help. Sam, I hope that you learned something as well. Yes, I did. I was taking so many mental notes, but I definitely know who to come back to if I have more questions. Great, great.
Well, I think it's safe to say that we came, we saw, we adulted. <laughs> well, everyone, we did it. We tackled taxes. Well, somewhat. You still have to go tackle them on your own, but hopefully some of this information can help you out today. As you guys know, I love to wrap up every episode by giving you guys three tips to walk away with, so let's get into it. Number one, it's never too early to start thinking about a pension plan. Not only does this help you save with your taxes, it also is just smart to be able to set aside some money for the future. Number two, set a little aside for taxes each month. I cannot stress this one enough based on personal experience that it is so important to set a little bit aside each month or each quarter for your taxes. This gives you a better idea of where you stand and you're already prepared to pay what you owe. You can estimate about about what you're gonna owe and what you should set aside each month by figuring out what you paid the year before. And number three, keep track of your receipts and what your expenses are so that way at the end of the year you are more organized and you know what you can actually write off. Big thank you again to David and Sam for being a part of today's episode and thank you to you guys for continuing to watch Adulted. I hope that you guys are learning something new each episode. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at weadulted and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on the next video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Genius.